Welcome to this weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Greek, and today I'd like to look at a morphological question, a question about why Greek words change so much in spelling. You can see here I have an email. I asked David's permission to share this. He he wrote me about Galatians. He says, I'm going now through Galatians. I ran across this word, which looks nothing like its present infinitive. <laughs> Lament. All around the world, Greek students are saying, we feel your pain, right? He says, I'm figuring it's the second heiress. Where did the lambda come from? And he sent me a screenshot here. You can see he's in Galatians 1.4, the, the verb there, ex eletai. And the lexical form you can see given down below here is ex aereo. So why, why such a huge difference in spelling between the present lexical form and this aorist subjunctive? Well, often in such situations, I will send students to the standard reference work, this excellent book, The Morphology of Biblical Greek by Bill Mounts, a great work. Sometimes students don't know how to use it, so I'll show you. There's an index in the back. I took a photograph of this. You can see it's just alphabetical up at the top. It tells you, you know, on this page, this letter to this letter, so on. So if we if we look for the lexical form, I'm, I'll just zoom in here, right? The lexical form of the verb that he's asking about is ex aereo. And then it gives us this code. And if you flip through the book, it, it's pretty clear, you know, I'll have CV 1D, uh, CV, uh, you know, 2A, 2B. It's, it's, very easy to, to figure out if you just take a couple of moments to flip around and see how it's coded. So we're looking for the page number that has has this at the top. And there may be two or three pages that have that at the top. So we come here and we say, okay, there's there's the V1D2A. We're honing in here. And it, it gives us the uncompounded form of the verb, right? X I re O is a compound form. So it gives us the uncompounded form and you can it, it gives us the principal parts, which are always in the same order. Uh, you, the, they're, it's not listed at the top of the page here, but it's the present active, the future, um, the the aorist active, the perfect active, perfect middle passive, aorist passive. So it's always going to be in that order. And I always tell students, I'd, I'd like to joke around, I said, you see that little little dash? You didn't expect that the word would look like that, but it's just a dash. Of course, that just means the form doesn't occur in the New Testament. When you see a word like this and it has lots of footnotes, <laughs> then you know this is a complicated word. This is a word that has issues. This is <laughs> this is a word that's working out its, its uh, historical issues uh, through a variety of spellings. And this is the aorist form right here, right? So we're going to especially be interested in footnote three, but we'll take note of the other ones too. So we skim down here to the bottom of the page. Footnote number one begins by listing some of the compound forms, an aereo, af aereo, and there's our ex aereo. And um, this is important too. It says aereo uses two roots, right? And that's that little star means this is a root, aere. And then well. Now, if you don't know what that <laughs> looks like, a big F, that's a, a letter in Greek called the digamma, the digamma that has dropped out of usage uh, by the Koine period in, in normal speech. Uh, and it's usually pronounced like a W, but well. And so we were thinking, oh, that's where that's coming from because it, the, the forms in this sort of family of of forms for this Greek verb is drawing upon two different roots. Now, if we go down here to footnote three, you can see they're showing you how the original form there was augmented, the digamma dropped out, and then these epsilons combined to be A. But remember, a subjunctive, like the subjunctive we were looking at, would not have an augment, right? And so the digamma just drops out, and that's why we just have the stem L. Now, some of this terminology you may not be familiar with it may be a little hard to follow but there's a growing this process of growing as you you explore these things you become more familiar with them another option if you don't have Mounts's morphology biblical greek i'm going to recommend to you uh, an artificial intelligence website claude.ai <laughs> okay i have a I have a, a friend a fellow daily dose subscriber here who has been experimenting with the ai uh, platforms out there, and he said Claude.ai was the best at explaining um, Greek things. So I typed in today, and if you're not familiar with typing Greek, go to typegreek.com. You can see I just have the forms right there I typed in. If you don't know how to type them, use the alphabet key. The alphabet key will help you figure out how to type these. 
And I just pasted them in here. I asked, why is the air subjunctive of ex aireo spelled so differently than the lexical form? The subjunctive form is spelled ex eletai. Would you please explain the morphological differences? I felt a little strange using the word please, but it is named Claude, so I felt like maybe I should be kind. I don't know. Uh, artificial intelligence is strange, isn't it? Let's see the answer here. It says the subjunctive, the significant difference in spelling between the lexical form ex aireo and its air subjunctive form ex eletai is due to several morphological changes that occur in Greek verbs. Let's break this down step by step. First, it notes that it's a compound verb ex aireo, uh, consisting of the preposition ex and the simple verb aireo. So it's just sort of laying the groundwork there. Stem change. The verb aireo is irregular and uses Different stems for different tenses. All right, right on, Claude. The present stem is aire, but the air stem is el. This accounts for the major difference in spelling. Now, they didn't deal with the digamma, which is causing, again, some additional changes when it drops out and the augment combines in the indicative. So it's it's not as thorough as Bill Mounts, but it is very helpful. Um, it's also noting um, the verb is a second aorist. It doesn't use a sigma alpha. Uh, the subjunctive mood, there's a lengthening of the stem vowel, it uses a middle voice ending. And then look at this, it even sort of breaks down what happens. So I was impressed with how Claude.ai did. It took me about 30 seconds to register for the website, and I will continue exploring that in the future. But there's a couple options there, right? You can go the more traditional route, which I recommend. It's a great book, The Morphology of Biblical Greek. You can tell by the, war, the worn cover, I, I have explored a lot of students' questions with this over the years. Or perhaps you want to try this new route and try artificial intelligence to answer some of your morphological questions.